we have here three terms. First, abstract data type. Second is data type. And third is data structure. Let's go over each one of these terms and later compare and contrast these three terms or find out the similarities and differences of these three terms. First, the abstract data type or ADT. It is defined as a mathematical model with a collection of operations on that model. Second definition would say a generalization of primitive data type. And the third says it specifies the type of data stored. It specifies what its operations will do. So clearly from the three definition statements, we can say that abstract data type or ADT is simply a mathematical model which describes a set of data and the operations that are used to manipulate the data. So again, abstract data type or ADT is a mathematical model that describes a set of data together with the operations used to manipulate the data. So ADT is a set of data and operations or operators to be performed on that data or used to manipulate the data. We have here two very common examples. Say in mathematics, we denote i to be the set of integers and i which includes both the positive and the negative integers as well as zero is a set of whole numbers right so the data for this abstract data type or adt i is all the whole numbers and what are the operations or operators it's addition subtraction multiplication and integer division say for example we are considering the c programming language division when used for integers is called integer division meaning when both operands are integers like when you say 5 divided by 3 that gives you 1 so we call this integer division because both operands are integers and therefore the result is integer which we call as the quotient when you perform integer division now another is r or the set of real numbers other books would write it this way so for this particular abstract data type or adt r set of real numbers the data are the numbers with decimal places like 3.0, 5.0, or 3.14, these are real numbers, okay, with decimal places. Unlike whole numbers, they are just uh, from negative infinity, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, whole numbers, okay? So these are the whole numbers, data for integer, while these examples are for the data of real numbers. How about the operators for the set of real numbers? It's still the same because these are numbers. You can still perform addition, subtraction, multiplication. But the division here is not the same as the division there. The division for real numbers is the normal division that we perform. Say, for example, we have 5.0 divided by 3. It gives you what? 1.0. 666 or 1.67 right or you could write it 1.66 with a bar there meaning 6 is repeating so integer division gives you the quotient while the normal division gives you an approximate value with decimal places second is data type this is defined as referring to the kind of data that variables can assume, hold, 
or take on in a programming language and for which operations are automatically provided. So from the first definition statement, we can see that data type is again a set of data together with the operators or operations used to manipulate the data. And the second definition statement is a classification of a set of data values together with its operations. And the third states referring to atomic data types, of course, in a programming language. So again, from the three definition statements, we could summarize that data type is describing a unique set of data together with its operations or operators that are used to manipulate the data. And what is the difference between abstract data type, the one we discussed a while ago, and data type? ADT is a model, a mathematical model describing a set of data together with its operations while data type is not a model it is an actual implementation of ADT in a particular programming language let's say the ADT I is in C programming language that is our integer right in so when you're going to declare a variable of type integer you would say in your C program in x right where x is type integer and therefore it can take on integer values or whole numbers like 1 2 3 0 negative 14 etc okay so data type is an actual implementation of the adt the model while adt is just a model it's like adt is the blueprint mathematical model while data type is the actual implementation of the model ADT in the particular programming language. So, for example, in Java, it's still int, right? For the ADT real numbers, the data type or implementation of that real number in C language would be either float or double. These are the two data types that implements the ADT real numbers. In Java, it would still be float and double. And say in Pascal programming language, it is real, not float or double. So we have here examples, say int in C language or in Java. This refers to the whole numbers like negative 1, 0, positive 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the operations or operators you can use to manipulate this data are addition, subtraction, multiplication, integer division, and the modulo operator. Okay, this one. For the implementation of ADT real numbers, it's either float or double. And the operations or operators are the same. You can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and the normal division. There is no modulo operator for float. So modulo operator that returns the remainder is only available for integer. You see, each data type has a unique set of data and operations. While float, on the other hand, these are real numbers, it could be any numbers with decimal places, positive and negative, say 2.3 or negative 5.76, okay? And these are the operators you can perform. For character or string, you can perform the built-in string operators or functions, okay? Including concat. So concat is to attach two characters or two strings together resulting as one string, which is not found, this one, concat, in other data types such as integer and float. This is unique only for characters and string type. The third is data structure. It is defined as the implementation of ADT in terms of the data types or data structures. Each basic data structure 
has many variations and allows different operations to be performed on the data. So take note of these two words, data and operations. The second definition says, it is a collection of atomic data represented in some unique structure. So from the two definition statements we have here, we can say that data structure is simply a collection or a group of atomic data together with the operators or operations used to manipulate the data. So it's a collection or group of atomic data, a group, a collection of data together with the operations or operators used to manipulate the data. And this grouping or this collection has a unique structure, meaning this atomic data values are structured in a unique way. And examples we have here, which we're going to discuss for the remainder of the semester, are array, stack, queue, linked list, tree, and graph. So say for array, how are the atomic data values stored? It is linear, right? You say, for example, array of integer, like when you declare in C language, for example, A to be an array of three integers. So we have A0, A1, and A2 as the three data items. So this would be your A0, and the second is your A1, and the third is your A2. And say, for example, the values of the three data items are 5, 9, and 3. Then this is the storage for A0. This would be 5, and this would be 9, and this would be 3, right? So that is your array A where this is A0, A1, A2. And operators or operations for all of these data structures, the two common are insert or insertion and delete or deletion. How do you perform insertion and deletion for array? Say if this is your main memory or the RAM, and this is your A0, and this is your A1, and this is your A2, and this is 5, 9, and 3. If you're going to delete the second element, then you will simply move this up, okay? So 3 would go to the place of 9, so resulting to this one as 5 and this one as 3, where 5 is your A0 and 3 now is your A1. And that way you have removed this element containing 9 as the value. Say we're going to insert the value 4 at this point. So what we're going to do to insert is to move this one there. Okay, so this now will be 3. And then that's the time you can change this to 4. So notice that for data structure array, you can perform insert and delete operators or insertion and deletion at any position in the array structure but the stack is a structure that is uh, described this way the top is considered open that's where you can insert and delete from and the bottom is closed so say this can hold four elements to do insertion or insert we push a new element into the stack Okay, we call this our stack. So we push, for example, this sequence of values, 5, 9, and 3. So first you push 5, so 5 goes here. And then you push 9, so 9 goes here. And then you push 3, so 3 goes here. That's how you insert. So insertion operation is called push for data structure stack. Okay, and deletion operation is called pop for the data structure stack. So if you're going to delete an element, you have no choice but to delete the topmost. You cannot delete those elements which are not on the top. You can only delete the top. 
okay so when you delete or when you pop from the stock then what you remove is the top which is three and therefore this is now containing five and nine when you pop again it removes nine and so nine goes out as the second element and then when you pop again that's the time five goes out as the third element when you insert or push in this order first five nine three resulting to this structure and when you delete it would be the reverse first it would be three and then second is nine and then the last would be five that's why the stack is called a last in first out structure the last to get in the element or the value which last to get in is the first to get out so as you can see for data structure it's defined as a group of atomic data values together with the unique operations for those values and these data elements are stored in a unique structure that dictates how operations are to be performed.